so my name is Justin Massey. I'm a product manager for Datadog. Uh, and rather than dive into the demo of the Datadog product or talk too much about it, uh, we have a sponsor booth for that. And you can check out that. But let's dive deep into audit logs. Uh, I work on our threat, to ma uh, threat detection product and I, I work with a lot of our customers. I look at, uh, I talk to them about their application logs and best practices. And I've worked on many different uh, environments before and the application logs always seem to be lacking some information. So one thing we want to do with these application logs is we want to do analytics on them. And analytics, uh, we have like our analytics on the right hand side and our actual logs on the left hand side. Now, these are all of our authentication events. So imagine you wanted to detect a, uh, an outlier and you see that this outlier, this user admin has more, uh, is, for, uh, has more failed logins than the rest. If you wanted to drill down to this specific user, uh, you want to be able to ask questions about that, why? And you may want to drill down to a specific IP address and you want to take a look at that. Now you want to, you've, you've now quickly drilled down you can see all of this uh, information uh, regarding this specific audit log. But first to get here, you have to have your audit logs in a good condition. Uh, the next thing you wanna do on these audit logs is you want to do threat detection on them. Uh, you're gonna to want to look at these sim audit logs and ensure, uh, uh, for this example, you may be wanting to detect it like a potential, potential brute force attack. Now, another thing uh, that you use your audit logs for is customers ask for them and then when they're asking for them, it's typically not at a good situation. Uh, your audit, the customers are asking for those audit logs because something else in the environment is going uh, going on. Maybe they have a security incident and they're investigating. So you want to be able to return these audit logs in a quick manner. Um, next, after the customers ask for them, they're going to ask you to delete them. Uh, so this is the right to be forgotten. So you want your audit logs in a good format where you can quickly uh, delete them uh, when the customers have requested that. So you ask, what's the problem? Well, I've logged into many different uh, uh, applications when I'm starting a new job and I've taken a look at our application logs and something like this happens. You see John Doe logs in uh, and it doesn't necessarily say what IP address it was from. The next one is a field login from this IP address but what user just did it? Um, then you have password reset was sent, sent to who? You're not answering all the questions here. And even though that this John Doe logged in and this failed login, these are both like authentication events where the outcome may have been successful or unsuccessful. They're very similar logs, but you're not showing that. Uh, and it's gonna be very hard to uh, present this in an analytical way or uh, search for these logs once they're stored. So uh, if you want to do things like show your top audit logs, uh, you need a better format. So how do we talk to developers about these audit logs? What, what can we suggest? Well, I'm gonna pose some very, very, very basic questions. We want to know who is doing something. Typically this is a user. What is that user doing? Where is that occurring from? Maybe that's what uh, uh, an IP address. Uh, when did it occur? Why? Um, so you may not always be able to answer the question why. Why did John Doe log in? I don't know. But if your audit log said, uh, we locked this user out uh, because the user failed to log in five times, that's your reason why. But you may not have a why for every single log. So we take this example log, we have the timestamp, uh, John Doe logged in uh, from 1.2.3.4 with OAuth. So this gives us a little bit more information. It asks, it answers all of those questions. However, uh, your developers may have done this for OAuth, but for something like SAML, the format may have changed. Even though the login was still a login, it was just a different type. So being able to search these, it makes it very difficult. So I'm gonna pose that uh, we use a little bit more structured format. What if we said user equals John Doe and, and uh, we've used the equal as a delimiter and we've put quotations around that user's name. And we've said that the event is an authentication event and the outcome of that event was successful. Uh, so we answered two what questions here. What was the event and what was the outcome? Now we have an IP address uh, where they logged in from, the, the type of authentication and the type, uh, type equals audit. 
We've appended this audit so that we can quickly search search and filter down to all of our audit events. Now, a machine can easily read this. Um, you're seeing this. Uh, imagine if you had a Grok parser or some sort of uh, uh, regex, you could quickly uh, filter down these key value pairs, and you get something that looks like this: user John Doe event. Um, and then you can see how much easier it is to gather that information about what the specific event was and graph this and display this uh, in whatever uh, way you're doing your log management. Now, how do you get there? Uh, you want some sort of central audit log function. Uh, this is a very basic function. Uh, uh, pseudocode uh, looks something like Python. Um, it takes in a couple of different attributes. It would take in the request object, uh, the event, and the outcome. Now you'll see that the first thing I do in the outcome is I've put an allow list here for success and failure. And the success and failure, uh, I do this because there's many different ways to say success. You can say success, successful, or failure. You can say fail, failed, failure. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to say this. So we just put a little allow list here and require that they are in this list. The next thing we do is we put it in that exact format. And we're going to let the uh, let the logger handle the timestamp format. So once you have the centralized audit function, I want you to monitor it. And what I mean by monitor is, uh, if there are changes to this file, maybe this is just in like, if this was like, say it's like logger.py. If there's ever a change to this file, you should know. So whether that's setting a code owner's file in GitHub or having something in a CI check. Please monitor, make sure that it's uh, when it is changed, you are aware of that change. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, when you're talking about users, you may, be, you may be asking the question, you know, was this request from an API key or was it from a browser session? Or what happens if the user has five API keys and I need to, uh, one of these API keys is compromised, so I need to know which one was the one making the request. So uh, you should take this in mind when adding this into your log file. Next thing I want to talk about is IP issues. I've seen many, many logs where they are in the wrong, uh, where they're logging the wrong IP address. And typically this happens in HTTP logs due to the improper use of X44 headers. If you take a look at this, if John Doe makes a request to a web application through a load balancer, you may be getting the IP address of the load balancer and logging that into your application logs. That is not good. That is not what you want. You want the original IP address of John Doe. Uh, so please, please, please make sure if, if your web application should only be external to external applications, maybe you can make sure uh, that the IP address matches um, uh, an external IP address format. Next thing I want to talk about are joins. If you take that same scenario where you have a load balancer in a web application, uh, you may want to gather other information from that initial request. Uh, in your web application log, you may not have the user agent, but you want to know that user agent information. How do you gather that information? Well, if you don't have an ID to join them together, it's not going to be possible. So I recommend adding a uh, some sort of request ID in here so you can trace it through the entire application stack. And that should be logged in all the all of the logs so that you can quickly filter down and see every single uh, every every single log that was associated with that request. So next thing I want to talk about are some considerations with which events to log. Uh, when we're talking about API, we we commonly talk about CRUD: create, reads, updates, deletes. One of these is not like the other: reads. Reads are non-state changing API calls. However, they should be logged. But you're going to have a large number of reads. Very, very likely you're gonna have a high number of reads. So you may need to uh, consider the storage of the reads differently than the stateful configurations. Now don't, no, don't think you don't have to log the reads. You should log the reads because you're going to need, say if a data breach happens uh, and you want to identify what content was accessed, you want those reads. So what should you monitor for? This is just a, a when, you're, 
when you're figuring out what to log, you need to think about like what exactly are you monitoring for? And if you're in security, it's not only security use cases, there's also operational use cases you need to ask. So just think about this, write down exactly what you want to monitor for and make sure that those events make it into the logs. Uh, a couple of things, extra things to ponder is how you're storing your audit logs. You know, are you storing these on disk and then replicating them to, uh, you know, some uh, offline or, or like S3? Uh, are you making sure that these can only be um, uh, like read once, write many? Like how, uh, how are you storing these audit logs? Uh, how do you handle those deletion requests I mentioned earlier? Uh, if you have logged that information in a, in a nice format, it maybe is going to make your life a lot easier to run a script and delete that content that has to be deleted. Uh, with that, that's uh, that's all the talk today. Um, Sam, I'll hand it back to you.